Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Caleb. In this video, we're going to be talking about six things you need to know as a Python beginner. Overall, I think Python is a pretty awesome language and I originally did not like it, but I think it's because I did not understand the approach of Python and some of the cool tricks you could do inside of Python. So one interesting thing I learned is that if you import this, well, it'll actually give you a pretty good description of the approach of Python. It, it is pretty simple, but beautiful is better than ugly. Explicit is better than implicit, meaning it's better to specifically describe what you're trying to do rather than have things happen magically. Simple is better than complex. Complex is better than complicated. Flat is better than nested and so forth. You can read through some of these. So that was just a kind of a cool thing, but pretty much the approach of Python is to keep it really simple. To keep things simple, we introduce one simple rule, and that is the indentation of a line matters. The indentation is used to describe the structure of the program. So let's go through a very simple example to show this. Let's say we have a list of data, and we'll just put some values in here. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. We'll just say 5, 10, and 15. And what we're gonna do is we are going to do an if statement. So we'll say if 10, and we can use the in keyword data to check if the value 10 is inside of data. Then we use a colon. When we go to the next line, this is where we describe what happens if this evaluates to true. And it's important that there is this indentation here. Now, whether it's a tab or four spaces, I'm not going to get into that debate. I believe with Visual Studio Code, when you hit tab, it'll automatically put four spaces. And we can just do something simple like print the word found. So we run this and we get the value found. You'll also notice there's nothing ending the line and that's not necessary because we're going to put any additional statements on the next line. So the white space in Python is very important. We use tabs to describe what section a thing of code is in. In this case, this print is within this if statement. And we don't end lines with a semicolon, so the next statement will be on the next line, like so. So running this, you can see we get both of those outputs. If we wanted something to be outside of the if statement, we can put it down here. Without a tab, this is always going to execute. So when we run this, let's say it's false. Let's say we're looking for the value 19. When we run this now, we just get this final line. This is always going to execute. No semicolons, just tabs. We don't have to worry about curly braces either. Coming from another language, it can look a little strange. And I think that's why a lot of people come into Python feel awkward. But when you think about it, a lot of those characters are no longer needed, so it's actually a lot cleaner. So that is the first thing. The approach of Python is to keep things clean and to be very clear about what you're trying to do. The indentation of the code will decide how the code works, which also prevents any errors of incorrect indentation that you might get with another programming language where someone fails to indent for a certain code block and it gets really confusing. Well, the code will actually execute differently in Python, so you'll run into that issue a lot less if you're making sure your code is working the way you expect. So now, not only do you get the correct output, but you have a consistent layout for your code. Now, when it comes to something like an if statement, you indent your code, but this doesn't create a new variable scope. Now, I know this is a beginner video and we're already talking about variable scope, so maybe I'm jumping ahead, but this is actually a really important thing to understand when it comes to Python that is different than a lot of other programming languages. So to understand this, I'm going to go through an example with JavaScript, and then I'm going to explain how Python is different. So here we have some JavaScript code. We have two for loops where this inner for loop is nested inside of this outer for loop. To do a for loop, you create a variable, such as the variable i, and you count to a certain number, incrementing by one each time. It's a very basic for loop. The same thing is going to happen on the inside, but this time we're gonna start at a higher number just to keep things clear inside of the console. So what we'll do is we will output this inner for loop, which should output three numbers, and then we'll output the outer for loop. What happens is we get the values 100, 101, 102. That's from this inner for loop. Then we get the value zero. That's from this here. And then we're just gonna repeat that. 100, 101, 102, one. 100, 101, 102, two. 100, 101, 102, three. I think you get the point. And it's gonna continue doing that 
all the way up to 100, 101, 102, 9. This is made possible because each loop has its own scope. So this variable i exists for this loop, and it's a different variable than this variable i, which exists for this loop here. These curly braces define a new scope. Well, inside of Python, it's a little bit different. So let's create the equivalent inside of Python. Let's get rid of this code here. And we could say something like for i in range 10, and then we'll have another loop inside for i in range. And this time we'll start at 100 and go to 103. And for this, we will print i. And then for the outer loop, we will print i. This is not going to work as expected when we run this. It starts, goes 101, 102, 102, 100, 101. <laughs> it looks like the numbers are all over the place. And that's because these variables are referring to the same thing. So to do this in Python, you would need to create a new variable such as j. Now we should get what we expect, where it counts 100, 101, 102, 0, 100, 101, 102, 1, and so forth. So this indentation for this loop didn't create a new variable scope. Now, if you do get into creating functions, those do have their own scope. So you can use whatever variables you want inside of a function without having to worry about erasing another variable's value or anything like that. So if you're brand new to Python, that may have seemed like a bit of a jump in difficulty, but as a beginner, it's one of the more important things you should understand. I encourage you to rewatch that section if you need a little bit more understanding for that. The main thing that you need to know is that Python creates a new scope with functions, not with loops and indents. Indents does not mean a new variable scope. The next important thing that you should know is that Python is interpreted. And this means it goes through the code as it's being executed. It doesn't compile like C Sharp or Java or C++. This introduces a challenge where you might not see an error until that line of code is executed. This includes if you just have a syntax error or something like that, whereas another programming language like C++ might catch that syntax error during compile time. As a result, there's often extra tools with Python that you can use to catch these errors ahead of time. So let me show you a quick example of this. Let's just say we have some variable, we'll just call it data, and we're just gonna say it's true. If data, and then we'll just type out, you know, we had a typo, our cat walked across our keyboard, and you can see I do get a suggestion here saying something's wrong. So if we run this, we do get an error, name error, name, is not defined. However, if I go up here and print this is a message or something like that, and we run this, you can scroll up and you can see we still get that output. So it's not like it looked through our code, noticed we had some issue and didn't even run. It actually ran the code, it just didn't hit that issue until after it already printed this as a message. This means that if data happened to be false, this line on number four, might not get hit, and we don't see that error. Even though we still have that error in our code, it's not as easily caught with Python. So you just gotta be a little bit more careful with your typing, make sure what you're typing is actually a thing, make sure you spell it right, and make sure you do your testing to check all the different possible ways that the code could go. This example is obviously pretty dumb because we're just typing the value in, but this could come from anything or even user input. And in that situation, we don't know if this is gonna be true or false. Now, the next thing you should know about Python is that there's just a few key data structures that you should know, and you can do pretty much everything you want inside of Python. Now, yes, Python can be object-oriented programming, so the possibilities are endless. There's essentially unlimited types available. However, there are just a few that are pretty basic, That'll give you 90% of what you need. And that is lists, dictionaries, and sets. So I already gave you guys three tips and I was gonna do like four and five, but we're gonna have a bonus one in here. So a total of six different tips. So let's first talk about dictionaries, probably the one you're going to use a lot, especially if you're doing any kind of web development. So dictionaries are great because they have a one-to-one relationship 
with any JSON that you might be working with. So you can easily convert between dictionaries and JSON. So let's say you had this JSON structure. If you're not familiar with JSON, it's just a way to describe data similar to XML. It's just a little uh, bit better in my opinion. This is very common to see with web development APIs, and it's super easy to work with JSON inside of Python, which is another reason I love Python. So let's say you got all of this data as a string. So let's say this string is assigned to a variable data, and I just pasted this giant string. I did do this ahead of time. I pretty much just surrounded it by single quotes, and then just got rid of all the extra spacing to get everything on a single line. To easily work with JSON, we can import JSON. And what we do now is we use this JSON module to work with this string. So we say json.loads for load string, pass in data, and we can assign this to a new variable. I don't know what to call it, I'll just call it data JSON. And we can print this out nicely with this module called pprint. So you can say from pprint import pprint, which stands for pretty print. And we can use this to see our JSON data. So pprint and pass in data JSON, like so. Running this, and you can see we now have this JSON structure. We can easily traverse through this. For example, go into glossary and keep going in to grab whatever data we want. Let's say we wanted to grab this title here. Well, we would need to go into glossary and then title. To do that, we can just print it. We'll say data JSON dot get pass in the name of the thing we want to grab. So glossary. And then again, that's going to return a dictionary. So we can chain another method call on here dot get. And we're going to get the title. So we'll pass in title. Run this. And you can see we get example glossary, which is the value we are trying to get. So you can see it's pretty easy to work with JSON data inside of Python. And as a beginner, you might not be doing this a ton, but if you ever get into backend development or working with websites or talking between different applications, you will certainly run into JSON. And it's really awesome that Python has the ability to easily work with JSON just using the built-in dict class, which is short for dictionary. Next tip is to get comfortable with Python sets. These are really powerful because it allows you to have different sets of data and figure out how they're related, such as figuring out what data is shared between the two sets. So to start working with sets, we'll start with a clean slate and we will try to find some mutual interests between two things. You know, maybe this is for some social media app or something. So we can have interests one, and sets are also defined with curly braces, but they're no longer key value pairs, they're just values. So let's say we're interested in biking, swimming, and running, and we're gonna copy and paste this for interests two. And let's say this person is interested in gaming, biking, and sleeping. Well, you can figure out what data is shared between these two sets with a simple operator. So we'll just print the value. It actually returns a set. So if you needed to assign it to a variable, you can, but you can just say interests one and interests two. So this is going to get everything that is in both the first set and the second set. When we run this, we get the value biking. So that is just one of many set operators you have available inside of Python. It's probably good to familiarize yourself with some of the others and just realize how powerful they can be. Another one would be exclusive or, which is going to pretty much do the opposite, get everything except what is shared between these. So it'll get rid of biking and we'll just have swimming, running, gaming, and sleeping. Last tip I have for you is working with lists and becoming familiar with list comprehension. List comprehension is a fantastic tool if you want to act on each element in a list and create a new list. So let's go through a quick example. Let's say we had a list and it had the values one, two, three, and four. And we wanted to operate on this data and square it. So one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, and four squared is 16. But let's say we even had some more requirements and we wanted to skip 
any threes. So we actually wanted to get rid of this value. Well, these are some of the powerful things you can do with list comprehension. It seems pretty simple here, but when you want to process data and execute functions on numerous elements inside of a list, this is essentially how you're going to do that. So how would you generally write this? You could do this in pretty much any programming language. You would first create a loop. So you would say for i in, and let's assign this uh, a variable name. So we'll assign it to the variable data for i in data. And you can just see this by saying print i times i. So running this, we get 1, 4, 9, and 16. So we're on the right track. And what we can do is we can assign this to a variable squares. And we'll just start with an empty list. And we will append to squares. So we'll say squares.append, pass in i. And then afterwards, we can just print squares. So we're on the right track. Print. We end up with 1, 2, 3, 4. We just need to append i times i to get 1, 4, 9, 16. The last thing we need to do is we just need to skip any we want, such as the three. If i is not equal to three, then we're going to append it. Otherwise, we're not going to do anything, and the end result is one, four, and 16. So we skipped the nine, looks good. We can do the same exact thing with list comprehension, which is a Python way to do this. So we're just going to basically rearrange these statements. So we're going to say we want to grab the value i times i, and this is going to come from for i in data if i is not equal to 3. And this entire thing is going to go inside of square brackets. This does the same exact thing as all of this. We just now need to print it. So we can just assign it to squares and print squares. So we should get the exact same result. And you can see 1, 4, and 16. So it's a little bit complicated, a little bit confusing. The very first thing here is the end result, what you want to get, i times i, and then you define where that comes from for i in data. And then you can add any conditions if i is not equal to three. If you don't want the condition, you can get rid of that, and it's just going to do everything. So that's how that works. But yeah, it's a lot simpler, and it's going to be seen a lot inside of Python. So make sure you at least understand the basics and know that list comprehension is a thing. So those are some beginner tips for Python developers. There's a lot to unpack there, not gonna lie, so make sure you go study each one of these things and have a pretty decent understanding. This is just scratching the surface. I have a lot of other Python videos on this channel, including a six hour and seven hour tutorial series. So you can watch the beginner Python if you're brand new or the Python programming if you have a little bit more experience and you want to go a little bit deeper. So check those videos out, or if you are interested in some more backend Python development, I am in the process of developing a Python backend course, and I'm giving early access to the notes for free. I'll leave that in the pinned comment below if you want to follow along for the journey and get started. So check that out, great resource, and it goes into a lot of detail. So that's where we're going to be applying a lot of these principles to actual development. Thank you guys. Stay tuned for the next video and be sure to subscribe. Peace out.